much for spending the time to come over here and attend this presentation. This is my ISM presentation that I've been working on all semester with Ms. Farley as my mentor, thankful for her, and my instructor, Ms. Richardson, who's been a big help also. She's taught me a lot just about the professional world. And this PowerPoint <laughs> contains information from outside sources. <laughs> so this is a picture of Ms. Farley and I back last semester after Hamlet. So, you all know Ms. Farley. <laughs> Uh, my experience with the theater department here, I've been in it for almost three years now, so it's been about three years of training under Ms. Farley's direction and Ms. Owen and all the other wonderful supervisors. I've been in about eight shows so far, roughly, and I've written my writing experience in addition to that. I've finished two novels and two plays. So some important aspects of the field of theater, drama, and writing are college degrees do not guarantee success, Directors have input in almost every creative aspect of the play, and year-round work is never guaranteed because there are very seasonal fields involved. And you have to have a lot of networking to be really successful in fields like this, especially if you want if you have goals of becoming like famous and renowned. You need to have a lot of networking. So my semester plan this semester was to assistant direct for a small family business, our UIL show and kind of spend that re just confirming everything I've learned so far in order to be able to apply it to my own show to direct, which is called Convergence. I also wrote the show. And like I said, the small family business was kind of a final test before making my own show. So the small family business was our UIL one act play. I served as the A assistant director, and it was my second year being an assistant director for the UIL one act show. We had 13 cast members and five crew members. Uh, one of the most important things was teamwork. We had to do it together. There wasn't any individuality in it. It was all about everybody coming together and producing a great show. Like I said, it served as a recap of my own skills. So some of the things I do as an assistant director, lead warm-ups, take notes, offer input when it's allowed, attendance records, cast manager. When Farley's looking one way, I try to keep my eyes the other way. Um, miscellaneous help, offering help to anyone who needs it. This is a, an example of an AD bin and a reminder. This was a bin from Hamlet. This is a picture of me leading some warm-ups. I see some familiar faces in there. So we took our UAL show, a small family business, to competition recently. We advanced to the district level, competing against other schools from the area. We had a great show. Great run, I was very happy with it, very proud of everyone involved, and very proud to be involved. We gave our final public performances a couple weeks ago, and this is a picture of the whole cast. Unfortunately, this curtain is serving as a projection screen, so everybody looks kind of blurry, like convicts or something, but okay. <laughs> They're all wonderful people, I promise you. So, convergence. <coughs> The inspiration for this show was in the theater hallway, as you all have seen, I'm fortunate you all are acquainted with that hallway. At the bathroom, there's the those tiles, those wall tiles that have all the shows. I noticed one day during Hamlet rehearsals that four of them were just names and dates. And I was like, that doesn't seem like a show, and there's four of them, and they're all different. And I could tell that they seemed to reflect the type of person that this name represented, the way the tile was painted. I so I went and talked to Ms. Farley, and I found out that there were four teens who died within two or three years of each other in the department. And their names were Hunter Rainey, Megan Amon, Tiffany Rowell, and Heather LeVolk. So the themes of this show, this show is my answer to why the good die young. It's a very common question people ask sometimes in a philosophical conversation. This was my input. It's not to reflect or advocate any religious belief. And so some of the themes are sacrifice, blame, dependency on one another and or on drugs, materials, life itself, pride, and true heroism. <laughs> so the convergence zone, it's where teenage souls go once they pass. It's a quote from the character Hunt inspired by Hunter Rainey. So the Convergence Zone allows for those who brought their own lives to an end to wait for an unblemished soul to be their savior. 
but their savior can only take that role if true sympathy is evoked. If so, how it works is people of the same age and same community arrive in the same convergence. So Hunt, Hunt is he overdosed on painkillers, and his character shows us that number one, you can't kill all pain without killing yourself in the process, and number two. It's okay not to be okay. We should use our own pain to draw strength. Hunter is saved, Hunt is saved because he did not cause his own pain, but he rather acquired it from trying to do the right thing. Chloe, she was inspired by the story of Megan Amon. She died from self-inflicted wounds. And she, represents, she represents those who feel the need to punish themselves for whatever society seems to want to punish them for. She is saved because not only is she able to forgive those who made her feel unworthy of life, but she's able to save herself and forgive herself in the process. Stephanie, inspired by the death of Tiffany Rowell, she was shot to death, and she, her death represents those who find themselves victimized because they get involved in the wrong crowd, so to say. They get involved in things they think they're ready for, they think they're emotionally and just life-wise ready to be involved in. But sometimes when you grow up too fast, you end up in places you're not, you're just not ready for. She is saved because she learns to stop blaming others for the path she chose to take in life. Heather, she died in her sleep. She represents the tragedies that no one can predict, and the victims of fate rather than the victims of people. She's able to save the others because she learns to sympathize with them. For even though she seems much more sin they seem much more sinful than she. They also experienced pain she never had to. In the end, the four teens come together in order to move on, which is the definition of convergence as it applies to this show. And these four teens, there's stark differences, which is really what inspired the show for me. I was thinking about how different all these deaths were and how tragic they all were at the same time, and how they all came together in the end. And so their stark differences become irrelevant in the end, making their ability to empathize with each other the only thing that matters. The show is dedicated to any and everyone who has ever been taken from Earth before their full potential was reached. So there we are. Thank you very much. everybody who took part in this show, everybody who helped me out, because I could not have done it without you. Caitlin Hoffsa, Tyler, Velocity, all of my actors, Joseph Grazier did a lot of truck driving. I'm thankful for him. And I believe this Goodwin's English class should be arriving at any moment. And while we wait for them,
name is Hunt Matthews. I did not seek death. I sought release. Little did I know that you were synonymous. February, 1984. February, 2001. It can unfortunately be said that I sought death. But let it be known that was not my original intention. July, 1986. August, 2013. I was confident. I was naive. I was a victim. I was a child. April 1986, July 2003. <laughs> where am I? She's here. It, it's okay. Everything's okay. Who are you and why are you in my room? I said the same thing even though I woke up. Should we call it waking up, Chloe? It felt more like the opposite. Like what, Stephanie? Falling down? You do not touch me. Nobody touches me. Not since he well, that was what the hell is going on? Let me explain. You've died, but you've completed our convergence. You'll set us free. What? Died? No, you have me confused. I'm Heather. I go to high school. I have no enemies. I live on 42 Collingwood Street. My mother wakes me up every morning. Yes, where is my mother? Heather, you said. Take a look around you. Your mother's not here. She's in her bed sleeping. You're dead. Now let's try to focus on the positive here, Stephanie. Hey, it's all right. It, it, it's not going to work. You're not asleep, Heather. Wait, so you were asleep? Never woke up? How did you feel immediately when you passed through? Passed through? Die. You're dead. Hurry up and come to terms with it, please, so we can get out of here. Show a little sympathy, Stephanie. From the looks of it, she died of some unpredictable cause. She doesn't know she's dead because she wasn't conscious when she died. Wait, what do you mean get out of here? Get out of where? The convergence zone. It's where teenage souls go once they pass. We were trapped here. I overdosed. Chloe took her own life. And Stephanie was murdered by the evil crowd that she chose to hang around. Each of us had died. And we all went to the same high school and lived in the same community. Therefore, we all came here in the same convergence zone. We're trapped because the convergence zone is only purged when it's filled. And filling it requires an unblemished soul. We have been stuck here waiting for a soul who did not arrive here in its own state, not even partially. It's you, Heather. It took you long enough. So I really am dead? Yes. Then why is my bed here? We've been trying to figure that out about our own stuff. Well, hey, maybe everything touching us when we die came through with us. I mean, my couch is here, and that's what I died on. That would explain my chair. What? The floor in my living room didn't come with me. That's what I died on. Well, what did come with you? Nothing. <laughs> well, you're still wearing your clothes, aren't you? Um, okay. <laughs> Because I'm here now, you all can move on. Did you bring me here? No, 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 no. no. If, if we had the ability to bring other souls here, we wouldn't have been waiting so long. It's not a human force. It's a, a thing of nature. The teenage population presents a, a martyr every so often to balance out the immature evil of their, or our, that martyr is the savior of all who inhabit this convergence zone. Well, for us, Heather, that martyr is you. I'm no martyr. I'm 15. Well, who chose me? Who brought me here? Nobody brought you here but the fate itself. Do you hear what I'm telling you? You're the only one out of the four of us who can set us free. And when does that happen exactly? She's clearly not cooperating. She is the fugitive step. She's the product of her own mistakes. Pure life is about because bounty and purity is our deaths, saving the teenage population from breaking convergence. Be thankful. Yeah, well, maybe you two sinned, but not me. Not really. What happened to you? I was shot. My best friend and my boyfriend were killed as well. Do you know how bad it hurts to be shot? It's funny. I always thought it was like a thousand serious knives piercing you in the same place over and over. I was shot over 50
15 times. But I felt nothing. I'm in darkness. Wait, Stephanie. I heard about you. You dealt drugs. You were murdered by one of your customers. See, but you brought that upon yourself. Drug and violence go hand in hand. I didn't even get a chance to say goodbye. And you think I did? You honestly think anyone around you got to say goodbye? to the door and I let them in. I let the killers in. I didn't see the gun. It was concealed. I handed them the drugs and waited for the money. It didn't come. Why not? He claimed we owed him. That Robert ripped him off before we started dating when he used to deal solo. But isn't that Robert's fault, not yours? Yeah. Didn't stop them, though. They pulled out the guns and the fear, fear petrified me. I was frozen. I felt so helpless. I wanted to fight. Robert tried to, but they shot us all and you know the rest. I'm sorry. <laughs> me too. 
do <clears throat> for letting my friends control my life, for being so reckless, for growing up too fast. I didn't know you had any regrets. Yeah, well, we all regret something. Unfortunately for me, I still have regrets from after death. Like what? For being so jealous of you. I'm sorry. I still want to have to depend on somebody else to save my own life until somebody else ended it. What do you mean? I didn't have control over my own death, and now I can't control my own salvation. But you can control it. How? By seeking Heather's help without reluctance. Convergence needs will, and it needs trust. I think that's the lesson we all must learn before we can move on from here. <laughs> and I suppose you've learned it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Uh, what about you, Claude? Uh, I think so. But no, it's different for me. How? My story is different. Well, then get to telling it. I mean, if, if Heather needs to hear it, that is. Well, even if I don't need to, I want to. Okay. I just got home from school. My mom was still at work, so I was alone. I went upstairs to take a bath, and when I got to my room, I threw my bag down. How fell that math test I failed? How would I tell my mom? I was always a straight-A student until, well, I'll get there. I thought about everything that big red X stood for. Friendless, freak, fake, failure. You're not a freak. And you're not friendless. Maybe not now, but this was then. Let me finish. I'm sorry. I felt this desire to cut. Why did I think that was okay to, to hurt my own body? I didn't want to, but I needed to. I needed to feel something. Even if it was pain, it was something. It felt right. I deserved it. None of the kids at school will take the word to the next level and do it themselves. It became my own responsibility to punish myself for whatever they wanted to punish me for. They hated me. I was wrong. I was flawed. I was different. It wasn't okay. But it is okay. It's okay to be different. Not to them. I grabbed a handkerchief and tied the worst cut up real tight. I knew that would save me for at least a little longer. 
I guess my mom changed her mind about love, though, because when I turned 15, she, she divorced him and we moved away. We moved to a new city. She got a new job. It, it paid the bills. Things were looking up. You know, I, I even liked my new school, and, and I stopped the drugs. But then my mom... And what happened? She died in a car accident. I'm sorry. Don't worry about it. And after she died, my dad got custody. And I imagine you can you know how I felt about that. And you know, everything was getting better. And then all of the sudden, I was back at his place. And the beating started up the day I got there. So I started using again. Which brings me back to the day I died. Watching that show about roller coasters. He stormed in, as drunk as always. And he landed the blow that left this. I had had enough. So, just sat there a good half hour, thinking. Wondering how much would be too much. I didn't want to overdose. I just wanted to take enough to make me go to sleep, to, you know, So I took some, and, and after a little while, I, I wasn't feeling much. So I took some more, and then some more, and then I woke up here.
Thank you, thank you everybody for coming. <laughs>